Welcome to Bath Talks with Jim Brew. Hi everybody, welcome to a brand new episode of Bath Talks Season 2. It's our second season of Bath Talks. Very excited that we were able to negotiate and get the entire original cast back together. So exciting. I look forward to finding out what the rest of the cast did over the summer, over our little break. So exciting. Uh, myself, I did some stand-up over the summer. I worked my day job. I hit on women much younger than myself. You know, all the good stuff that good people do. Uh, welcome to uh, the first episode of Season 2. Uh, so, here's what we'll talk about today. Experience. Experience is the best teacher, right? Absolutely. And uh, what do old folks like to do more than anything is give you the benefit of their experience. When you're going through a thing, they like to say, Oh, I went through a thing like that. Like maybe you're having trouble at your job and you say, oh, I can't believe I'm having this trouble at my job. And the old person will say, well, when I was younger, I had to load coal into the heating part of a ship. Do you think you got it bad? I had to load coal into a ship as we were going across the ocean. So, you know, you've got it pretty good. And sometimes that can be kind of useful. And certainly experience has its place. But experience, misapplied, is just an irritant. Uh, and so sometimes maybe we should check ourselves and all our great experience that we have. Uh, a really good example right now in California is finally people are going to get a little bit of a pay bump and minimum wage is going up. It's going to be $15 an hour. Um, and for those mathematicians out there, $15 an hour, when you calculate it, is still not that fucking much money. It's $15. Ease up, Republicans. It ain't that much money. Don't worry. People are still suffering. But people get all bent out of shape at the idea that somebody's going to get $15 an hour. And I've legitimately heard adults say this, including, by the way, some of your elected officials who work in finance. Um, who have backgrounds in economics will say stuff like, well, that's a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, when I was that age, I was only making $3 an hour, they'll say, or sometimes they'll have some example like 50 cents an hour. Ignoring inflation, ignoring the fact that back then they were also taken care of and they weren't actually making a living, they were working in a candy shop for old man Mr. Grumpus at the cool candy shop uh, and just ignoring inflation altogether and that's one of those misapplied examples of experience so sure you made less money but you know what dumbass the world has changed people need to make more money and fifteen dollars an hour really isn't that much money and what people also say like well you know the minimum wage is only you know, $9 in whatever locale. And then, of course, they ignore the fact that the cost of living is much higher. Here's where experience, though, can pay dividends. As people will go, well, if you raise the minimum wage, it's going to ruin the economy. And then my experience is, well, I live in California, and we have a bunch of, like, socially progressive programs, and we're a bunch of crazy liberals, and... Uh, our economy is the best in the nation. Our economy is better than some small countries. So actually it turns out that liberal policies aren't necessarily the death knell of economic progress. In fact, oftentimes it's fantastic. You see this a lot of times in like, people talk about like one, like with healthcare is a good example. People are like, well I was a kid you know, you just went to your local doctor, you don't worry about all this crazy insurance. And again, ignoring changes, as if the fact that when you were a kid things were different means anything. Well, when you were a kid they delivered milk. You know, when you were a kid there was an ice man. <laughs> when you were a kid there were three channels, which must have been a nightmare. Um, so your experience isn't as impressive as you think. 
Mine neither. You know, uh, when I was a kid, I, I had all kinds of experiences of like having like uh, my mom make a lunch for me, and like your mom should make a lunch for you. Well, a lot of people don't have two parents anymore, and you know who cares that that was my experience? There's another set of experiences people have. And in fact, what you really should be seeking out instead of sharing your stupid experience is listening to other people's experience. You'll hear that from older women talking to young women who are feminists. I've heard older women uh, say to young women when they get hit on by some old idiot like myself, uh, you should take it as a compliment. Well, no. If they don't take it as a compliment, it ain't a compliment. And I understand, old woman, that you got beaten down throughout your life and you learned to accept that, but these young women are trying to carve a better path. I am sorry that you lived in a much more sexist society, but that doesn't mean that young women have to tolerate it today. You know, black folks don't have to be happy because Martin Luther King made things a little bit better. Black folks can go, yeah, but it's still not good enough. And that's how all of us should view it. I feel really lucky in a way to be alive right now. I used to be really frustrated within the last couple of years with all the politics, but I feel like maybe I'm really lucky because maybe I'm alive at a tipping point. I feel like I'm alive at a tipping point when it's one of those moments when the world is finally going to pass a certain kind of idiot by. I feel like how it must have felt like when, if you were alive when women finally got the right to vote. I feel like that. That there were all these people... By the way, that's an earthquake. If you hear that noise, that's an earthquake. Um, there's all these people who were alive when women got the right to vote who were outraged, who felt like, eh, the world's going to hell. But there were other people who were like, oh my gosh, I'm here at a critical moment. My experience is irrelevant because the world has suddenly made a sea change. So when you're getting ready to share your experience with other people, consider relevance. Consider the relevance of your experience and consider that actually maybe something new is going on and maybe be open to that. Music is the same way. If you get to be that person who is locked into your young experiences, the experiences you had when you were a kid. Well, then you ignore all the cool music that's coming out now because, gosh, it used to be so much better. Music was fine when I was a kid, but you know who's great? Miley Cyrus is great. She just is. She's very talented. And I can say that even though I happened to be alive when uh, Frank Sinatra was still recording stuff. But... You bring your experience to the table, but don't use that as an excuse to ignore what's great now. now. I know I'm all over the place. This is episode one of a brand new season. Very excited about the new season. I've got a lot in store for you if you're a fan of the show. New bubbles. There's going to be brand new state-of-the-art bubbles. Uh, you know, we had the old bubbles were great. And listen. A lot of you purists are going to look at the show and think that we've we've sold out, but look at these awesome bubbles. I got another duck. I got a littler duck. A young duck. Older duck. This duck. Wow, when I was a kid, you know, people were grateful for what they had. This duck. Hey, man, I'm just trying to make my way in this crazy world. Old duck. All right, maybe I'll listen to you a little bit. Maybe we can learn from each other. Next season, maybe there'll be three ducks. Maybe next season there'll be three ducks and no me. <laughs> that would be a pretty good show. Just a camera pointed at three ducks floating in a bathtub. Anyway, that's what I was thinking about this week. I was thinking about uh, some of the fine folks in California who will get a minimum wage bump. And... By the way, statistically, every time there's a bump in the minimum wage, it's good for the economy. It just is. It's never a bad thing. So I'm excited. One of the complaints I do hear is people who are making like $16 an hour, who are like, ah, that doesn't seem fair. I worked so hard to get 16 And you're like, well, yes, 
I do get that complaint. That's a valid complaint. But you know what? Other people need stuff. And maybe don't make it about yourself. Maybe just kind of be glad that a few people are going to be able to afford to be able to afford to pay their bills a little bit. And if you live in California, you know, not that well. $15 an hour only goes so far. So let's just be happy that California is at least humane enough to do that. And no knock on any other part of the country, but honestly, if you guys are in another part of the country and you're fighting a minimum wage increase, you're being stupid. Stop doing that. Take care of each other. That's all we're supposed to do is take care of each other. And that part has never changed. When I was a kid, we were supposed to take care of each other. And now as an adult, we're supposed to take care of each other. And in my entire life, that's the one bit of experience that I can say has panned out. It really has turned out that if we take care of each other, things are better. Ah, I'll give you a really stupid example, and then we'll end on this. Uh, I went to uh, Taco Bell because I treat my body right. And uh, I got in line in Taco Bell in the drive-thru, and there was a woman in a car who was going the wrong direction to get into the uh, drive-thru. She was going the wrong complete direction. So basically, so the drive-thru was like curved around, like if you imagine the drive-thru is like this, and she's trying to get into the drive-thru like this. So we're all like this, and she's trying to kind of sneak in because she went the back way. Well, nobody's letting her in because she went the wrong way. Uh, it was almost my turn, and then I thought, well, I'm just going to let her get in and get her stupid taco because she's probably hungry and probably in a hurry. And she was legitimately surprised, you can see it in her face, that she was like, ah, oh, this is the nicest thing anybody's done for me today. And how sad is life if that's the nicest thing anybody's done for you today is let you buy a terrible taco. But I let her in, and then uh, she waved at me, and we did the thing where you give the thumbs up to let everybody know you. Yeah, we're all good, you know, the various symbols we give. This used to be called a Fonzie, by the way, when I was a kid. Uh, she got in line, got her taco, got, you know, got her sadness meal or whatever, whatever stupid thing she ordered. And then uh, when I got up, uh, I got my uh, taco, and I got my cheese roll-up, which, by the way, is just cheese and a tortilla. I really like that. And uh, I said, I handed him my credit card, and he said, no, no, the woman in front of you already paid. She paid my bill. It was pretty cool. And it, I had been in line so long, I forgot why she did it. So I paid for the guy behind me. So, I don't know what the point is, but I think I'm pretty great. The point is, let's be nice to each other. And uh, your experiences when you were a kid, not the barometer for how things should be now. Here's the truth. When you were a kid, things were stupid. We should make them better. I know that because when I was a kid, things were stupid. My dad drank a lot and hit me. Uh, I don't now go, ah, well, if your dad only drinks a lot, it's great. Or if he only hits you, I have both. Nah, eventually it's good if people don't do either of those things. Anyway, this is episode one of Bath Talk season two. It was nice to see you. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my bath. That was pretty good, one. Bath Talks is a Jim Bruce production. Bubbles provided by Amori Arce. If you enjoyed Bath Talks, click subscribe.